You're gonna learn why you can't defend yourself with a walking cane, what to do instead. I'm gonna have you do this instead. But first I want you to warm up with the spin. Now we're going to talk a lot about the spin. In fact, the spin is one of the most common things that you'll see in a lot of different styles. And it's one of the reasons you can't defend yourself with a walking cane. Too much reliance on the spin for the wrong reason. And I still want you to spin for a very important reason, which we're gonna talk about as we go through the warm up. So start, these are always warm ups and discussions. When we talk about why you can't defend yourself with a walking cane, do this instead. We're going to be training the whole time. So you're spinning, you're holding your hand mostly closed, but not squeezing. Closed enough, it doesn't come out. Loose enough that it's gonna spin. The long side of your cane is gonna come out of your thumb and your first finger. You push it forward, give it a little bit of juice, get it going, and then squeeze your belly muscles up and in, stomach tight, drop your chin a little bit, breathe through the nose. Do the standing or sitting. There's no way to do it wrong as long as you're moving. After you have this spin going, start to go across the body and back. Now, why your cane, you can't defend yourself with a walking cane, do this instead. This discussion starts with the spin is because I've seen so many people talk about, when I train people in person, so many people are just falling in love with this idea that you're gonna spin your cane in a way that you're gonna create almost a shield in front of your body and you're going to keep the assailant from getting you. You're gonna keep the guy from getting you, jumping in, smashing you, punching you, kicking you, grabbing, stabbing, whatever it is. For self-defense, the spin with the cane or almost any martial arts weapon for that matter, the cane is not used in self-defense. Sometimes it is, like with a certain Joe techniques, a few techniques that you would use with a bladed weapon, but in this case, spinning for self-defense, seems like it would work but my experience in my opinion and, and trust me i definitely could be wrong so just so take my word right then go verify for yourself train for yourself learn from other people but as we start this discussion why you can't defend yourself with a walking cane do this instead i want to talk about spinning in self-defense is a way for the cane to come flying out of your hand for them to jump in and stop your motion while you're, even if you hit them and it bounces off their head, even if in a normal scenario, wouldn't hurt that much, but now they're full of adrenaline, anger, rage. They want to come in and smash, crack, do everything they can to hurt you. And you're spinning to try to keep them back. That just bounces off. They don't even feel it. And this comes from a lot of video that's taken, taken by uh, security cameras, law enforcement where we see, think about a police officer with a metal baton, an expendable, uh, expandable baton, smashing. And there are lots of videos that you've seen, and I've done the training as a law enforcement person with batons and have them bounce off, and in, not just in training, but when responding to like a bar fight in the Marine Corps, I saw many cases where, and I didn't have to do this because I had different amounts of training. I'd been doing martial arts since I was real little, I could go in in a much different mindset. But I saw my colleagues, my peers, hitting people with the batons, having almost no effect. And that's not with the spin. That's just simply coming in with these angular strikes, which we're also gonna talk about today. So the reason why your cane self-defense isn't going to work for you, you can't defend yourself with a walking cane, but I'm gonna tell you what to do instead. The reason, first reason is, there's so many videos, so much training, and it seems to make sense on the surface that spinning is the best way to keep someone off of you. Now, I'm not gonna tell you not to spin. In, in, in fact, I want you to spin. I'm sorry, I'm tripping up on um, <laughs> a little bit too much caffeine this morning. I want you to spin a lot. I want you to spin because it forces your core muscles to engage. It builds callus in your hand. It develops a sense of timing and distance. Proprioception, the ability to feel it and not see it, to know where it is in space and time, timing and distance, all that comes from the spin. Cardiovascular fitness, you're gonna improve your heart and your lungs. You're gonna get up a little sweat. You're going to improve the leanness, the lean muscle mass. You're gonna get a more powerful grip. So when you do go for the techniques that work, you're gonna be able to hold on to your cane better. So yes, spin. Spin as much as you possibly can. Learn how to do fancy spinning and then different techniques 
bringing it forward and back. Spend a lot of time learning how to do combat cane spinning. Learn how to be a caner who spins really well when you want to learn self-defense with the cane. You, but understand what the purpose is. Think of a boxer who jumps rope. Think of a boxer using a speed bag. Think of a boxer hitting a heavy bag. Think of a boxer practicing footwork on the mat and in um, uh, mitt, mitt drills, right? I would hold the mitts and then I have you go through the different techniques and we're going to, uh, you say, please sir, teach something new. Nishant says that, yes, I'll teach you something new, Nishant. Put in the comments below what you wanna learn, whether it's with the cane or with another martial arts weapon, and I will oblige. There's a lot of stuff I haven't taught yet. But think, the boxer does all those things to improve the fight in the ring, but none of those things go in the ring with a boxer. The jump rope doesn't go in the ring, the speed bag doesn't go in the ring, the heavy bags don't go in the ring, the mitts don't go in the ring, their coach doesn't go in the ring. Good morning, Kim from Utah. Spin to condition the body, to train the body, to get stronger and faster. Says, good morning uh, from North Carolina, zero gluten. And uh, is it Nishant? If I mispronounce it, I apologize. Nishant said, why can't you pronounce my name? I don't know. Uh, spell it out for me again, and I'll see if I can get it right. But go across your body in training. When you do this, you're gonna feel those stomach muscles squeeze. You're gonna to start to build up speed. You're gonna get stronger arms, shoulders, wrists. All your joints will get healthier. The blood will continue to increase and in flow, get in those joints, lubricate them, keep you safe from injury during the workout. Go over and back. Try to keep it super tight. Learn how to fight from behind your stick. Okay, Shot says I pronounced it right. Well, welcome to Shot. Tell me in the comment section, not, not just the chat, but the comment section what you want to work on, and I will oblige. I'll help you get it. Back and forth, back and forth, but the reason you can't defend yourself, why can't you defend yourself with a walking cane? I want you to do this instead. Hello from Germany, combat application. Marksmanship says hello from Germany. It's morning, morning here, so guten Morgen. From here, or guten Tag, whichever is most appropriate. Hello, coming through and doing these strikes makes sense. And then you say, well, I'm just doing these strikes with that spinning motion. And yes, that makes sense, but it's not the right application of the spin. The spin has to be over and back, over and back, over and back to build capacity for the strikes. But it's not a strike you use in self-defense. So the first reason that um, Nishan's asking for knife or ax, that's funny you say that because I've been doing two things lately. I've been teaching people how to fight with the knife and how to throw the knife and how to throw the ax. So let's do all through, all three. We'll start to work on that. Hello from South Africa, Peter Von Tonder. Welcome, welcome from South Africa. So the first reason why you can't defend yourself with a walking cane, and I'm gonna tell you what to do instead, is that you're spinning, you're spinning in a move, in a way that you're gonna use that for self-defense and you're gonna create this shield around your body and they're just gonna jump straight in. They're gonna come right in in a blind range. It's gonna bounce off their head two or three times and they're gonna get you. They're still gonna smash you, take your cane away and beat you with it if you use that for self-defense. Now, what I'm telling you is use, and Kim says spinning helps familiarize coordination and the techniques. And yes, this is what I'm gonna say. Do this instead. Do the spin, not for self-defense, but to condition the body for self-defense, condition the hands, condition the arms, condition the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, the stomach, the abs, your core muscles. Do it standing or sitting. It's both correct. You're going to use spinning, but use it for the right reason. So do that instead. Instead of spinning for self-defense, you're going to spin to support self-defense. Spin to build capacity. Spin to make yourself stronger. Now, good morning, Naj. Naj says, good morning, everyone. I'm going to give you more techniques specifically for self-defense, but I want to say when it comes to spinning, I'm not going to tell you to stop. I'm not going to say it's wrong. I'm going to say use it to get better at the rest of the things that I want you to train with. Now, the very next thing that I want you to do is understand one principle of self-defense. One principle of self-defense, which is that the most the fastest attack, that's immediate direct explosive, immediate direct explosive 
Again, I apologize if I'm tripping over my words this morning. Immediate direct explosives. Immediate direct explosive. That straight line, that thrust right through the middle of the body. I have not been in India yet, Nishant. I was saying earlier that it was my goal two years ago, uh, right before COVID. That was the year I was going to go to India. I was going to practice the Salam Bomb. I was going to do the Gakti, the martial arts from the, the Tom. Is it the Tamil, the Tamil warriors, the Tamil tradition? And um, I wanted to train like a Gurkha. I wanted to train like the Gurkha soldiers. Those guys are awesome. But I, I, COVID hit. <laughs> We're still waiting for all these restrictions to be lifted. And then I'm coming to India in Bangladesh, and I'm coming all over that part of Asia, the birthplace of Asian martial arts, where my passion is. Now, from here, having the ability to go straight in to the body for your opening self-defense move, your opening attack, is going to destroy. Good. They're helping me a lot in Stewart, Florida. Brandon's in Stewart. Brandon, I was just in Stewart a couple weeks ago. When we first moved down here to West Palm Beach, I told my wife, I want to live in Stewart because we used to vacation with stopping Stewart, stay there a lot, and I still want to get up there. I still think that's a, a I love it down here in South Florida. But Brent, Brendan knows, or Brendan knows what I'm talking about. Stewart's beautiful. Stewart's beautiful. From here, and it's not very busy yet, from here, straight through the middle, having that explosive first attack go right through their midsection, immediate direct explosive. I want you to understand that when you're learning how to defend yourself, there are gonna be many, 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 many techniques. One technique might be a strike like this. I'm gonna teach you how to do these strikes, right? I'm gonna teach you how to come through the middle. I'm gonna teach you how to come down on top. I'm gonna to teach you how to take out the knees if you have to, how to break the joints with your cane. Why your cane self-defense won't work? Your cane self-defense, walk. you can't defend yourself with a walking cane if your walking cane, your first few techniques, are so big and they again they just bounce off to the guy who's full of adrenaline rage anger murderous intent coming in to take your life and your your first technique is like that all of a sudden he's here on top of you smashing you fall onto the ground it's a horrible scenario but if instead you leverage you leverage the cane itself this is a combat cane or this is a dojo training cane from cane masters cane masters makes this in oak and in hickory. Now, hickory, I think, is a little bit stronger than oak. I prefer oak just because I like the way it feels. It feels alive in my hand, especially when I keep it well oiled and I sand off the burrs every once in a while, every two weeks or so, and I oil it up every week, stick it in the corner for the weekend and come back, and it just feels like it's alive, but it's strong. Cane Masters makes these in a unique, special, special way. Cane Masters opens the hook for your hand. Cane Masters makes these self-defense canes. This is the Dojo training cane in a very expensive way for this model. If you wanna see, go to the link below. You can see what this costs all the way up to the more expensive models, like the one that I have. I show you every once in a while, I don't, oh, it's in the corner over there. My everyday walking cane. I bring it from the car into the school and it's got eyeballs on it. It's got that nasty tooth there. It's gonna rip that skin right off their face for self-defense, right in through the, 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 the flesh, any, any part of their flesh you grab, that thing's just gonna do some damage for self-defense. But you're gonna leverage the cane itself. The whole purpose of using a cane is because it has unique features that support your body's strength. You already have strength. No matter how much or how little you think you have, you're now going to multiply it. This is a force multiplier when you hold it in your hand. So you could have it with the crook facing back the way you would normally be walking down the street, pop it into that front hand simply by lifting, simply by lifting from here to here. You bring it up, uh, Nova Scotia. Welcome Nova Scotia, center line of the body, immediate direct explosive. Your cane self-defense doesn't work when they come in, they're full of rage, anger, murderous intent. You go for that first swinging technique and it's maybe a little too wide because you're full of adrenaline too, you're full of fear, and you're trying to respond very quickly, and you don't even make contact, and they close the distance, your hand wraps around them, they got that knife five or six times in you, you're done. What you, self-defense, you're gonna do this instead. I want you to do this instead. Instead of this first opening strike, I'm gonna teach you all those, but I want you to do those after this this get in a better position first if you if you have the crook facing behind you bring it up 
If the crook is facing out, bring it up. If you've already gotten to this position, put the other hand on it. And no matter how you're holding it, maybe you're already in this position, put it here. And then you're just going to thrust straight through the center, straight through their body. This spine, the spine that runs along this way, you hit them when they're in motion, you're either going to hit their throat, that's fatal for self-defense, their face, they can't push through their face. Good morning, Danielle. Good morning, Inexplicable. Speed and reflexes matter, which is true. Um, if I'm coming this way and they're closing that distance really fast, I might not be fast enough. If I'm standing like this and they're closing the distance, they're going to run into the tip which is where I say, let the cane do its job. This hard piece of oak from Cane Masters, this Cane Masters Oak Dojo Training Cane. And again, you can check the link below and see what they cost. It's not very expensive. And if you're here in the States, they get, get them to you super fast. And I think shipping's either free or it's not that much. But you have to look at the link below. I don't remember exactly what they cost and how much. But from here, and if you're up in Stewart, He's that, the guy, uh, Master Keith Nelson, the spy master, go look him up, Keith, not Keith Nelson, Keith Melton, <laughs> Keith Melton from Kane Masters, go look up Keith Melton, he's a spy master, and writes books on spies, really super cool. No, I, the question is, wouldn't you also, Info Warriors says, wouldn't also swing at the legs to take those legs, and the reason that I say no is, again, it goes back to my training when I was a military, uh, military policeman in the Marine Corps, and then all of the videos, all of the training that I've seen since then, not just training, but real life um, law enforcement videos, where you've got two or three cops, and they all have police officers, they all have that expandable baton. Let me get it, and I'm gonna show you real quick. I don't know what I do with it, <laughs> but they've got, I brought back the knife so that you can see this thing's longer than the knife. This thing doesn't get cut. This is a knife trainer. This is aluminum, but it's a really good thing to practice with when you're practicing how to use the knife or how to defend against the knife. And notice I didn't say how to take the knife away. I can teach you how to take away the knife, but that's just for fun. I'm not going to teach you that for self-defense. He's got a knife. I'm not going to teach you to take away. I'm going to teach you to keep him away. Keep that distance. Thrust through the middle. Thrust through his face, his throat, his groin. But the reason I'm not going to have you go to the knees is because those videos, that experience that I've had, is that when those batons with the law enforcement come out, whether it's the expandable or the side handle baton, that PR24, or if they're using an old style, one of those old billy club looking things, and they're just beating on these guys when they are full of adrenaline or drugs or I mean they're high and stuff and I have a law enforcement guy who trains with me here retired years and years and years and years in one of the large met metropolises up on the east coast in the United States and we talk about it all the time he's like oh you should have seen this guy on PCP should have seen this girl on PCP should have seen this other guy on meth they come in and, we, and there were six of us beating on him and he was, he was just lift us all off and threw us so what you have to do instead is stick this in the nose because no matter how much adrenaline pcp other drugs are in their system this is going to take out the teeth this is going to go into the nose nico says please teach the basic steps nico i'm going to do that into the throat that's fatal you crush that they'll asphyxiate and die you you hit their leg and you crush the bone and they're still full they're, they're still coming they can still run at you with broken legs watch some mma fights some of these guys get broken leg they don't even know it's broken until the end of the fight everybody else saw it on the video and then they replay it for the next three weeks because it goes viral but in the in the middle of the fight the guy's still coming he's dragging that leg that's possible right that's very likely i come in or that's not likely that's possible very possible if i make that my first strike he's got a knife i'm done if i make his face nico this is your first technique start with it here Put it in your other hand. Start with it here. Put it in your other hand. Just by lifting this up, you're going to put it in the other hand. If he's coming in too fast, and that happens to lift up between his legs, that's okay. But put it here, and then just straight in. Create that distance. 
And if he's race rushing at you and that hits his face and that moves you back a little bit, that's fine. But that's also going to do some damage to their ability to breathe through his nose or mouth temporarily or his eyes to see or to his throat to breathe permanently or in <laughs> the solar plex, knock his wind out. That's going to slow them down, right? Two or three times. Then you can go to the other techniques for self-defense. The other techniques, the other swinging techniques, the slicing techniques that I also want you to learn. I want you to learn that. You can pop it around. You can stick this up and rake it into his flesh, into the body. Bring it up here in the shoulder, pull him straight down because that tooth is gonna do damage. But think about your first technique or techniques. Remember, the fight's not over until you win in self-defense. So if I have to create distance, if I have to stop a charging attacker or somebody who may have a knife, I might know it, I might not know it, may or may not have a knife, I wanna go straight in through the middle. And if I have to move and back up, I wanna be able to keep that distance of the cane between me and the other person. And if I can domination, you said domination. And, uh, inexplicable says domination. Yeah, if I can, but whether I can dominate or not, I might not be able to dominate for self-defense at the beginning. Yeah, um, and Kim says the big difference between the expandable baton and using this, this is gonna crush bone. Absolutely, I agree a thousand percent. Especially the Cane Masters Oak Cane. Definitely. And, and I think Kim knows because he's got one and he's practicing. Uh, hello, Jackson from Brazil. From Brazil. Hello, Jackson. Um, so, yeah, you can definitely break the bone. But like I said, you might break that bone and they still keep coming. If they close the distance fast enough and they have a knife and they lacerate. They, I mean, I don't know if you've I've seen these videos. Uh, law enforcement from the prisons, from bar fights, from street fights. It's everywhere now because there are cameras everywhere, whether it's bystanders taking video instead of trying to do something to help or security cameras everywhere store cameras they see what's really happening or law enforcement guys have cameras everywhere now well, not everywhere but the care cameras and they see even those guys are having trouble with someone who's got a knife they you can't let them close the distance and they can close the distance faster than you can respond but if you're in this position and they come in and you naturally respond even with a flinch into this you have the ability to first slow them down stop them push them back because they're not going to be able to overcome that or this or end through the throat that's the whole point of that thrusting first motion and if you can knock them out knock them out turn off their operating system especially if they have a knife or another weapon or they're part of five or six attackers coming at you if you can put them to sleep for self-defense you want to do that right so that you don't have to fight for five or six minutes until the cops show up to help you or a bystander who turns, puts their phone down and instead comes and tries to help you. That might not be happening. So instead, this first technique. So you can't defend yourself with a walking cane if your only techniques are these big swinging motions, whether it's horizontal or vertical or angle strikes to the leg, to the body, you can't defend yourself with walking cane doing those alone. The first thing that I want you to do is thrust. And Brandon says, step offline and thrust. And exactly right. Here's what I've learned. Um, I, I've, been, I've been teaching this for several years, though. This idea of moving offline, off the center line. So in other words, if I'm playing football, right, and I'm getting ready, I want to score the point, I've got the football, and I'm running, and the big linebacker, or the big uh, tackle's coming to get me, I want to be able to move and let him go that way. Same thing for self-defense. Here comes the punch, I want to be able to move, let it go that way, and strike him on the way by. Same thing's true with the thrust. He's charging at me like a bull, I want to be able to step to the side and thrust. If this is the attacker, I want to be able to move offline and thrust. And if you can do that, that's good, do that. Do that step offline and thrust. Practice that and you'll be able to do that. A lot of people have a hard time just moving laterally though. And it's just because we don't do that in our day to day. I do, I do it a hundred times more than that every day because I'm teaching it all day long. So for me, it's natural to just move. It's natural to move. You should practice stepping to one side, stepping back, stepping to the other side and keep one foot in front 
uh, InfoWarrior says what? Uh, make the, the thrust stronger. It's all about your body. Now I'm gonna lower the camera a little bit. I'm having some trouble with my camera rig because I've broken it so many times. It's hanging on by a thread and I tried the Gorilla Glue this morning, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how long, how long this one lasts before I have to get a new one. I want you to see my feet. If I'm facing you, if you're the threader, you're where the threat would be, I want one foot in front of the other one. That allows me to lean a little bit here, and then when I move forward, I go front foot, back foot. When I move back, back foot, front foot. One, two. This is what you practice. One, two. One, two. One, two. You could also step, but when you step, you go from a uh, closed position where you're behind your weapon to open back to a closed position. So if you don't have to step, don't step. Instead, slide and slide. Then when I go to the right, right, left, left, right. And you can place it first. And you can place it first if you want, if that helps, if that helps you move. But it's just to the side. Never cross your feet. You cross your feet and you get hit or you have to run back. You trip yourself and now you're on the ground. So instead, step, 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 step. One, two, one, two. Now put them together. Forward, back, and small steps. Right, left. Front foot, back foot. Back foot, front foot. Back foot, front foot. Front foot, back foot. So again, you never want to cross your feet. Now the second thing is, question about how do you get more power when you thrust? If I'm in this position or in this position, doesn't really matter. I'm going to move my whole body. Now just what I'm going to make this static. This is what most people do when I first start training with you. When I train with you, you're doing this. Now what's making the motion? It's my shoulders, chest a little bit. My arms are hitting. Now, if the opponent is bigger than you, bigger arms, bigger body, more power, more rage, more murderous intent, more adrenaline, more PCP in their system, and you just go like this, your hand, you're not going to do much, right? But your body, however much your body weighs, and I weigh, I don't know, 240, something like that. I weigh 240 pounds right now. If I move, I'm moving 240 pounds forward. If I just push, I don't know how much strength that is, but I know it's not 240 pounds. Maybe I've got 80 pounds. Maybe you've got 80 pounds here. All of a sudden, I just lock it. My whole body is now gonna move. Now if I move and push at the same time, or thrust, jab, now I have a lot more power. I'm gonna smash them over. The other reason this is valuable, this is important, the other reason is when you do things like this and you miss, you open your body up for an attack. You miss, but if you move, you have it open. It's like the bumper on the front of a car. The bumper on the front of the car doesn't move. If this is the bumper, it stays there to protect the grill of the car in the front of the car. This is like a bumper from here, move. So to get more power in your thrust, hold on, I'm coming back up with the camera. To get that maximum amount of power, you simply have to move your whole body. Now I say simply because it is a simple idea, but you have to overcome your instinct. It's counterintuitive. It's not the way we normally move. We, most of us live in a way that when we reach out to touch things, our hands lead. What I want you to learn how to do is have your body lead by moving your feet forward or even just a lean, leaning forward. It's better if you can move, move your body, move your, same thing's true if you have to get out of the way. If you want to step offline, the key word is step, moving to the side, moving back to the other side, move to the other side. Remember, don't cross your feet. If you're going left, step left foot, right foot. When you go to the right, right foot, left foot. When you go forward, front, back foot. When you go back, back foot, front foot. Practice that over and over again until it becomes instinctive and it replaces your need 
to reach out. It's like when you teach someone how to defend themselves with empty hands, whether it's boxing or karate, martial arts, where you're training with just the hands and you teach someone how to get a guard, get in a guard and cover. And when they, when a punch is thrown, if you want, if you teach parrying or blocking at all, you just want it over and back. I just want, that punch comes in, I want you to pop it out of the way, over and back, just a little bit, just a little like this. Mostly, I'm not gonna teach you how to block. I'm not gonna teach you how to block like this, block like this. Unless you wanna learn traditional martial arts, there's value in that in traditional martial arts, but that's not self-defense. It simply isn't. You can use those techniques in self-defense, yes, a thousand percent, but what usually happens for a beginner is when they go to do that upper block, they go, <laughs> it's out there. They got hit right here. Or they go, if someone's throwing a kick at their head or a punch at their head, and they block like this, boom, and they get smashed right in the face. I'd rather teach you from the beginning for self-defense like this. Guard your head like this. Don't move. When they throw that punch, flinch behind it. If the punch is coming over here, move your body out of the way. But keep your arms there like the bumper of a car. It doesn't move. If your car drove down the street reaching out and blocking other cars, right? The whole front of it would be open all the time. But it doesn't. It just sits there. It's welded in place. It's got those two little pistons in there with the little squishy things to take that impact. And, it, and it, hopefully it only ever gets used once, if at all. The same is true for your self-defense. When you have your cane, you're in this position. You're in this position. From the start, this is your first practice, your first motion. From here, boom, I'm ready, right? And then let them run into the bumper. But when you're ready to defend, boom, thrust, 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 your whole body. Front foot, back foot, front foot, back foot. Front, if you have to move back, back foot, front foot. Add a little bit of a jab, a little bit of a jab. Right into their soft tissue. Eyes, nose, mouth, throat, solar plexus, the, uh, between the belly button, or stick it in their belly button. I don't even have anybody to get hit, just but stick it right in the belly button. It'll put them on the floor. A little bit lower, right where that thin muscle, that fascia is right, that tears, and the guts stick out, that's called a hernia. Give them a hernia for self-defense. Put them on the ground, right in the private parts. Maybe it's that vicious animal. But the point is, however it is, wherever it is, this is between you and the threat. Now, your cane, you can't defend yourself with a walking cane if you only have slashing techniques. And most of the time, I, as I'm starting with a new uh, student, it's a lot, they're very wide because you're not really strong. So I want to fix this and do this instead. You can't defend yourself with a walking cane if you're slicing wide for two reasons. One, they're going to Close the distance, your arm's gonna wrap around them, you won't even hit them with your cane. Two, there's no power, because you're swinging from your shoulder and your shoulder joints aren't strong yet. So yeah, this, Nosh says distance, distance is very important here. So I want you to do this instead. You can't defend yourself with a walking cane if their swings are too wide, so instead you're gonna go from your shoulder. You're gonna put it on your shoulder and you're gonna slice. Now we are, we're past that at opening thrust. We thrust it a couple times, they've moved back. Now you're gonna press the self-defense a little bit. Push them back with an angular strike. Think temple, eye, ear, uh, neck, shoulder joint, elbow joint. Maybe they're reaching out with that knife or hand and trying to grab or punch. Wrist joint, knee joint. This is where we go to the knee. So from here, I'm gonna to come to the shoulder first. Right hand, right shoulder. And then when I strike, right hand, right shoulder. When I strike, it's in front of my body. See how tight that is? That's the other one. See how wide this is? It's not hitting anything, not hit, not, 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 that, and it hits it here. From here, from the shoulder, thank you, Doug. Doug just joined as a virtual student. Doug, I really appreciate it. I appreciate all of the virtual students here. I was looking at the membership. It continues to grow, and it continues to allow me to spend more time with you, which is where I want to be. So thank you very much. My right foot's forward, it's in my right hand. I come from here and the strike is now in front of my body. It's different here in power. This feels stronger because it's such a big wide motion. It feels that way until you put it on your shoulder. 
Yeah, Kim says vital get the thrust out fast. You have to deal with a cane control issue, which means what happens when they grab your cane. And we're going to talk about that. That's going to be where we finish. Yeah, welcome to Family Doug. Thanks, Nosh. From here, it's, it is just faster. And anytime a strike is faster, it's going to be more powerful. It's that simple. If I bring it here, that's wide and slow. Feel strong because it puts so much stress on your body. From here, this is, doesn't put much stress at all, but it's so much faster. And you're, again, you're using your Cane Masters Oak Power Cane or Cane Master. This, this one, the link is below if you want to look at it. This is the, the Dojo Training Cane. It's my favorite one to start with now because it's so inexpensive and it's extremely durable. For a while, I was saying, go to Amazon, get their cheapest cane, train with that, train with anything. Now I'm saying, you're gonna break those too fast, invest a couple more bucks and get one of these. But either way, invest your time before you invest your money. Figure out if it's for you. From your shoulder to the bag, stack of tires, or for self-defense. It's faster, it's more powerful, and look at this, the whole time, it's between me and the opponent, me and the threat. The whole time, I'm not. If I'm if I'm slow, if I'm late, if they're faster than me, I'm still going to hit them. I'm still going to hit them as they come in. If I'm here, if I'm slow, if I'm late, if they're faster than me, I'm never. I'm going to wrap my arm around them, and they're not even going to feel my oak cane. The cane master's cane is no longer going to be effective because it's just going to it's going to fall out of use. You're not going to be able to use it. I don't. know, Maybe you bring it. Smash. We'll talk about that from the other shoulder. Bring it down. So you can't use a cane for self-defense, a walking cane for self-defense, if your swings are too big and wide. And that's just that's how we all start. So you can fix it from the very beginning by putting it on your shoulder and pushing from your shoulder. Push from your shoulder and fix that big, slow, arcing slice with this very tight, more correct, more powerful, hit them while they come in, smash them all the way along. And then if you, if they close the distance and this cane is between you and them, you get your other hand on it and you still have the ability to fight, to twist and smash on their head and defend themselves. All right, Brandon keeps asking for basic steps. <coughs> Excuse me. Step one, put your feet under your body, lean on your cane. Step two, get into a better position, put the cane between you and the threat. Step three, put it on your shoulder and strike. Start over. We're going to do those first three steps, Brandon. Step one, lean on your cane. Make it realistic. Step two, get in a better position. Let it slide up so a little bit of the hook is coming down. Step three, same shoulder. Right hand, right shoulder, right, um, right foot forward. It's right here. Slice. Practice that motion three or four times. Then put it in your other hand. Do the same amount of training on one side as you do the other one, so you're ambidextrous. Step one, lean on it. Step two, get in a better position. Step three, from your shoulder, slice, slice, slice. Back to the first side. Step one, lean on it. Step two, get in a better position. Step three, slice, bring it to the other shoulder and slice. Practice that on both sides over, over, and over again. Oh, I know. Uh, uh, he said I, I teach it step by step in the other ones. Yes. Kingsman bear mug throw. I haven't seen that. Uh, Bearded Crane says, how about the Kingsman uh, mug throw? It sounds cool. You have to explain a little bit more. Send me an email. Go to Pasquinelli.com and contact me in those contact boxes. Start sending me this stuff. I'd love to see that. All right. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is cane retention, weapon retention. And I want to talk about why you can't defend yourself with walking cane and what to do instead. And it's one-handed cane, relying on the one hand. Now, you might have to rely on the one hand because you use the other hand for the other cane. Uh, yes, now I slice in the X form. From here, step one, step two, step three, step four. So from here, there's your X when it comes across that way. So cane retention or weapon retention. You can't, you can't defend yourself with a walking cane when you just try to fight with one hand and you convince yourself for some reason because maybe you haven't practiced a lot or the instructor you're working with didn't say put your other hand on it now I want to show you something in weapon retention that I teach with uh, the hand I need the bag 
that guy up there. Now, uh, for, for law enforcement, for military, for um, security, for security guys, especially, you know, executive security personnel, people who carry, I don't care if they carry here, here, uh, appendix carry in the back, carry it on their ankle. The number one time that this is removed from somebody who's trying to use it for self-defense or in their job, like law enforcement, is not when it's here and not when it's here. So in other words, they, they, they used to teach this and then self-defense, and uh, that's all shifted and changed. Now, from here, the number one time that this gets taken away from people is when it is being drawn in this position, being drawn, and then someone gets their hand. If you control the barrel, you can control just about anything. Now, I don't teach Krav Maga, he's holding it, and I'm gonna, I don't teach that. I don't, I don't think it's realistic, I don't teach it, I don't believe in it. So I don't teach it, we'll just get past that real quick. I'm not gonna teach you how to take it away from somebody. But if you use one for self-defense, I can teach you how to keep them from taking it from you. And we're gonna apply it to the cane in just a second, which is why I wanted you to see this. Now, anytime you have one hand by itself, now they grab with the other one, they actually have more leverage in this position because they're holding here with their hands closed see that and this hands mostly open they actually can peel that and that's what happens a lot of times people lose this because they peel that out right so the way to correct that if you are one of these people for self-defense is when you bring it out and you're they're too close they've closed that distance and now you have to pull it out is you bring the other hand here your hands are kind of pulling away from each other and then from this position i can strike extremely powerfully very effectively to the throat to the face to the body and then from here with my hands touching each other you're going to be you've closed the you've closed the circuit you're going to be so much stronger like 10 times stronger than just if i start throwing elbows i have some power if i close the gap and i have my hands together on this weapon and i'm throwing elbows I have so much more power. You're going to have so much more power when you immediately get your other hand there, push them back, throw those elbows, drive the elbow with your body. Your whole body is leading, driving into the body. Now you have that, this uh, position with this weapon. Now I'm going to put this away because that's not what this one's about, but this is something um, I'm getting ready to do a summer camp here. And this is one of the things that we'll go over, whether you use a, a pepper gun, a lot of times, you see when they grab, pull the trigger, a lot of times you're not even in the position. And then it's aiming this way, and there's their center. And then innocent kid, somebody else, somebody across the street. You don't want to do that, right? Or you just miss them all together, it doesn't work. And then they're, all, they're, they're holding the slide where they've covered the ejection port. And then it's jammed. So, yes, in theory, pull the trigger, but you can't. You're not going to be able to. They've effectively stopped you. But if you're holding this, you will be able to. And if they pull it in, yeah, it's very effective and it could be the end. Also, this old one that people do here, there, there's a SRT group. Those guys are the gold standard. SRT group, look it up. Um, the gold standard of training, these types of training uh, weapons and the actual training itself. These are the guys that come up with this. I don't make this up. But they teach... Um, in, their, in their trials on the range, it goes through your own hand. So it used to be you, you hold them at uh, arm's length, and then you hold it here, and then guys shot themselves through their own hand. So what they did instead was they come here, and now you can still keep them distance in their face, in their body, in their throat. Create distance, and then you still have control over it. And then go into the next position that you need to using that type of weapon. We're going to put that away. Because that's not what I teach on this channel, but if you're here in person, we can work on that. Um, uh, weapon retention. I just lost my train. I was thinking about some other stuff, fun things that I like to do. All right, so weapon retention. The reason you can't defend yourself with a walking cane and what to do instead is because you're relying on that one hand, and then they get a hold of that, right? And there are a lot of things like... Um, they're holding here, you put your other hand here, you do turns, and a lot of joint locks, pressure points, takedowns that, are, that will work, which is great. I'm not saying don't do any of that, but get your other hand on it, right? And from here, 
Now I have that strike to my weapon back. And I'm more effective, more forceful, even if they're holding here. And if they're holding here, you still have this leverage point here. You can with your whole body drive that in. And then all of a sudden, they're defending themselves from this, smashing at their face. They let, they're going to let go. The other thing is, if they're holding here or here, two hands, one hand, doesn't matter. You turn and smash, turn and smash. So when someone grabs your cane, you're going to turn, see what that does to my wrist, and then you're going to push it straight down, strike anything and everything you can to go straight to the ground, straight to the ground, straight to the ground, turn straight to the ground, turn straight. You're going to do this instead. Instead of one hand trying to fight against that person who's grabbed your cane with one or two hands, maybe they grab, you've got it here, and you, you are smashing them back here, hitting them here. All of a sudden, they take hold of it, turn and smash. And um, later this week, I'm, I have a new colleague that I'm starting to train with and work with. He's going to be able to do some of these videos with us so we can demonstrate this stuff. And you can see for finally, the COVID's starting to blow out here in Central Florida or Southwest, Southeast Florida, wherever I am. Uh, there's still masks, but it's getting better, right? But we're able to, I'm starting to get some training partners in. I'm going to show you in some of the videos after we do just a little bit of training, what it looks like and how it works or doesn't work. And then you can ask me more specific questions like prove it, show me that that works. How does it work? This guy grabs a cane with this hand, two hands, one hand up, one hand down, grabs this side, grabs this side, holds your, grabs your hand while he's holding your cane. He's still smacking with it. We'll go over that in more detail. But those are some of the reasons why you can't defend yourself with a cane, but what to do instead. You guys have been really awesome. Um, Doug, upgraded his membership. Thank you, Doug. I really appreciate that. Doug's now a virtual warrior. This is our virtual martial arts school. I appreciate you guys. Please take a look at these canes if you don't have one already, or just go and see what they look like. If you have any questions, reach out to me, or you can call the number on the Cane Masters. Talk to Keith Melton himself. That guy loves to talk about his product, and he has, I think, the best product that you can get. And I will see you guys.